this whole process. I'd be very glad we're not there. Um, <laughs> because um, social return on investment when done formally and through this, the, the SROI network is a, a very complex and lengthy process and it's trying to demonstrate that the, the financial investment on something benefits socially as well as financially or in other ways. Um, and it's a, um, you've seen one piece of the evidence that you've been collecting was an SROI form, so you, you've actually seen some of the ways, but that is one tiny piece of the whole. So there's this quite big complex process and you have to have be um, validated by an external assessor to have got the tick, as it were, for that. Um, it's quite complex, quite costly, really, in the end, and it's very, very time consuming. So in terms of, although it's, um, it's fascinating and it's, it's great in terms of what you can show to people in the end, um, it didn't feel like a tool that tutors could readily embed into the everyday life of the classroom um, and to do this on-course work without huge implications for beyond the course work, both the students, tutors, mm -hmm. learners and anybody else. And, and obviously that's just not. Alongside that, we also had um, impact work, in, in evidence of the wider benefits of learning, which we were, um, which we were looking at for uh, the, the current year's community learning innovation fund projects. There are 97 of those across the country. WA is running one or two of them, um, and they will finish in in July, and all of them are using the. Uh, a, a tool that we've developed um, for assessing and evaluating some small um, evidence of the wider impact. And again, it's got to be on programme. Um, and this project was then complementary to that because it was looking specifically at equality and diversity within that. Um, and that's where, so the thinking has come in all these different ways as to how we arrived at that this project would use RAPA. Um, and because that would then suit something that the WA was already doing. And so that was part of a long discussion early on in the project between my colleague and Mel and, and Andrea, really, and then with the steering group too. So this paper just is really just summarising the thinking there, what SROI is, what the other work, the impact of adult learning is. Just one thing, though, before we you know, just leave that, is that NIACE certainly now, in all its government-funded projects, is having to report on its own impact. So this methodology is something that we're having to use, not just for our work with learners, but for all our work. And we're having to show our impact. So the fact that we've done quite a lot of thinking now about what impact we have beyond whatever the immediate project is, um, is actually proving very, very useful. Because we've got some thinking internally about it. Now, at a good guess, you will see that happening. And where you'll particularly experience it happening is um, for organisations which have access to the community learning budgets, the skills funding agency budgets. Um, <coughs> some of you might be away, aware that there's community learning trusts have been piloted in 15 areas and, um, and that that will be the model for delivering that funding for the future. Not in, they won't be called trusts, but there will be partnerships of community learning providers in each area that is how the community learning budget, the, what used to be called the adult safeguarded budget, will be delivered now. Um, so for those of you whose organisations and the WA does have an impact to some of it, um, you will find yourselves affected by those local partnerships. That will also have an impact measurement requirement within it. So the fact that you are all now a bit familiar with some of this vocabulary, some of this thinking, this methodology will not at all prove to have been a waste of time. <laughs> You're going to have a, even, I mean, you know, the fact it's going to be in, absolutely embedded as part of the E&D practice within the WA is great news, but actually you'll find the thinking behind it really useful for other things that are coming down the line, at least for the next couple of years, as far as one can tell. So, you know, we're going to have to all be reporting on impact. I think this is so timely, you just can't believe how timely this has all been. So I think that you, having spent all this time trying to tease out what this really means in practice, whether or not you embed it into learning outcomes or whether it becomes an evaluation practice or however you do it, it's going to count because across the board, you're going to have to look at beyond D&B, &B, what other impacts do you have as well. 
um, and why the benefits of learning are going to be, how we manage to get any funding whatsoever for community learning in the future. I have to say that with the spending review happening right now, mm -hmm. um, that budget line is incredibly vulnerable. We do not have a minister who is totally on board with this at the moment. It would be very easy to just red pen it. So it's, we're not out of the woods on this one yet, I think. Uh, but if we, you know, if it does carry on safely, then um, then impact work will be vital within it. So there's a sort of there's a political dimension to this at the moment. So in terms of the conclusions of where we're coming from on, on this, it, it's a two-way process really. For NIAS, what we're going to be doing is taking the findings of this and embedding it into our existing um, impact work with other people, and then for your work what we're going to be doing is being able to share our resources and tools which you will be you know be able to gain access to and we'll put all that stuff on the joint websites and so there'll be that but we realize that actually i mean your point earlier jude is very very important it's got to be able to be embedded into what everybody's doing already it's got to be something which tutors can readily embed into practice however we choose whichever methods we choose to assess impact and evidence impact um, if it's to be on program, which of course really it's the only way we can realistically do um, for any of us, because follow up, yes, you'll have a national survey of sampling, but yeah. it won't be able to follow up everything, and you, and it's very hard. We all know how hard it is just to keep track of people for an, a few months mm -hmm. because people move and, mm -hmm. and so on. Um, so, absolutely, the decision to go with an existing framework was was a good one there may be things you want to tweak about that at this stage um, and really we, we need some feedback on the paper now just so we can finalize it and get it ready to be part of the products of the thing and i would particularly look ask you to look at because the rest of it's pretty much just descriptive just the last section the conclusions and we'll get some feedback from the steering group as well but if you had feedback on that section and could get it back to me through andrea then we can start to just finalise this paper because it's ready. It's nearly ready to go. Really, so. And that doesn't have to be today. You know, you can consult with colleagues, but uh, sooner rather than later. And you might want to set a deadline, Andrea, when you're, when you're rolling out. Thank you.